Good evening, everyone. So as we realize that we are the last thing standing between uh, uh, us and the cocktail, we are going to make it short. Uh, I'm really happy to share uh, the floor with uh, Dmitri. Uh, Dmitri, uh, Runa has been the first investor in Quantum uh, quite a while ago because they were historic investor in uh, ID Quantic, uh, so really the pioneers of the field. And since then, we have invested in four companies together. Uh, so it's a great pleasure to share the floor with you, Dmitri. Yeah, uh, pleasure being here on stage after uh, such a great speakers, right? We'll try to be short, as Olivier just said. And um, yeah. Uh, so a few words, uh, I won't be long, but uh, so Quantum Nation, uh, early stage fund dedicated to quantum uh, investment. Uh, we have raised uh, 100 million so far, uh, launching now our fund two, uh, co-invested with uh, a lot of uh, people, as I uh, discussed this morning, we like to co-invest because uh, uh, it's always better when there are more people around the table. Uh, deployed uh, uh, around 60 million, and, and so now looking at raising our fund two for 200 million. Uh, just a few on the next slide, um, uh, a few companies that we've invested in, uh, nine companies in France, and we are covering quantum computing, quantum networks, uh, sensing, and also a few companies in, in deep physics. And now I will let uh, Dimitri int introduce uh, René Capital. Uh, so we, we have been around as a VC firm for the past 13 years, more or less. And uh, we actually started as a team of founders, operators, uh, reinvesting the money into the startups. Uh, and uh, there are a few logos here. Those are the companies that uh, founders of Runa have uh, and partners at Runa have also co-founded. And uh, over these years, we have uh, raised and deployed into startups roughly half a billion dollars. We have about 100 portfolio companies, have made some exits, have a pretty broad network of uh, industry advisors and operating from six offices from Silicon Valley to Singapore. So quite, quite a global footprint by now. And uh, we have always been positioning ourselves as deep tech investors, but deep tech has predominantly been for us the software deep tech, so like complex engineering solutions, but on the software side. Uh, but from that, surprisingly, our thesis evolved also into hardware deep tech and quantum. And uh, I would like to sh maybe share a few uh, steps how it turned about. Uh, around 2013, we have made our first investment in quantum. That was a company, ID Quantique, out of Switzerland. Uh, doing uh, quantum key distributions and uh, other devices in quantum space. Uh, and it has been just one experimental investment back then, uh, and we haven't been doing much more, right? When in 2018, actually, the company has had a strategic partnership with South Korea Telecom, um, the, uh, we basically exited from that startup, made good returns, and from there on, around 2019, as we were setting up our fund three, we actually said, okay, let's now incorporate quantum into um, what we're doing. Let's do reach out, uh, see what, how the market is looking. And with that, we have made, again, uh, three, uh, like not, not as many as Quantonation by now. So th those are like small steps we have been doing ov uh, over the time. We've invested in Pascal, QNAMI, and QNCO, which later merged with Pascal. Uh, and uh, I think only now, as uh, Pascal has raised uh, recently this uh, mega series B earlier this year, we are really, really serious into deep tech and, and quantum and uh, uh, already this year have made uh, four investments. Not, not all of that purely quantum, but uh, adjacent areas like photonics uh, where we're also looking at. Uh, and I think many of the VCs will actually follow this path as they <laughs> get educated in the space that is actually very exciting and can give good returns uh, and upsides for, uh, for investors. Um, as we were preparing for this uh, call, uh, Olivier asked, uh, maybe I can make sort of backdrop and compare how is a market, how the market has changed, right? And uh, we as VCs, we always draw maps of startups in AI, in quantum, in B2B SaaS, anything, uh, FinTech. So here's the uh, current uh, map of quantum, and it's by far not complete. Uh, 
Whereas if you'd look at a similar map of 2013, it would roughly look like that. So there were a few pioneers in the US, like Rigetti, just starting D-Wave, IBM doing some, some stuff, uh, IDQ, which we end up investing in, and uh, yeah, that's, that's basically about it. I think the path, the path that has been, uh, uh, what has been achieved in the last uh, four or five years, I think it may be unprecedented because we come from uh, zero startup, uh, zero people involved or tryouts in the large uh, companies uh, to now a lot of uh, companies doing proof of concept, collaborations, uh, financing, a whole ecosystem. And it was incredible to see that happen in four or five years. What has been under the hood though is that a lot of research has been going on in the universities, right? Uh, uh, we did a bit of research and Scopus identified over 50,000 papers on quantum computing over the past uh, 15 years, more or less. And as you all know, um, the work in quantum computing and the work in quantum has been recognized by the Nobel Committee. So while startups were not on the surface, uh, something was uh, baking. And uh, I will skip the slide, it's just the current news. There is always something going on. Each and every company is presenting their progress along roadmap. I think it's exciting times, as, as most of the companies are actually delivering on their, on their roadmap. So it's, um, uh, it's already going from science to engineering, meaning that things are predictable. Yeah, what's important is to note that uh, uh, there is now a quantum plan uh, nearly in every country, uh, which is nice because it has proven to be very efficient. Um, if I take the example of uh, the French national plan, we have seen acceleration in, in numbers of ways, in a number of projects, in financing in the startup, but also for financing research. Uh, it has also been very impactful, for example, in Germany, uh, where if you look back at 2019, there was maybe, uh, you could count startup on, on the figures of one hand, and with the effort that they have put in, there are now r roughly 25 to 30 startups uh, in Germany. So those plans are very important, and they do actually work. And... Uh, also, also, very impressively, the past couple of years have been marked by a few mega rounds. Uh, I've listed companies here which have raised rounds exceeding 100 millions, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are more in this room <laughs> or, or in this building uh, which are going to join this club uh, in, the next, in the next years. Maybe two interesting uh, regarding that figure. So first one, uh, a lot of the investment have been made in the US, and so it's a challenge for a European company to be able to raise significant rounds. And the second thing is that most of it have, it, have been in uh, quantum computing hardware, and we expect that in the next year there may be a change and a switch to, toward communications and also towards software. Once we have more machines that will be available to uh, companies, startups, uh, we hope that there will also be a surge in uh, quantum uh, quantum software. Uh, this, uh, this is a study from uh, BCG, so you can see that there is a growing interest from uh, large corporates in, in different industries to try out uh, those technology. And now to me what's surprising is that uh, if you look at those companies, so a, a bit more than 100, uh, it's at the same time a quite sizable number, uh, but then I'm always wondering why do not all the 514 companies uh, are tr uh, trying try quantum? Uh, so still a long way to go, uh, even though uh, there's a great interest from those large uh, industry players. Uh, McKinsey recently did a study where they have identified that uh, around trillion uh, euros is, or dollars uh, in their case, uh, in, in the case of the study, is to be unlocked by the industry in the next, uh, I think it was 12 years. It was prediction to 2035. Uh, this is the value which will be, not, not all, all of that will go to shareholders actually, a lot of that will go, will go to us as consumers as the services are uh, improving. And the industries that they have identified, the four industries which will see the most impact are automotive, it are chemical, life sciences and uh, finance. So uh, if, if, if you're from these industries, you'd better pay uh, attention to what's going on. And maybe just to conclude, right? We see 
the quantum revolution. There is a lot of going on in scientific and engineering. Uh, government, uh, governments around the globe are investing in quantum. Industry is jumping on. Industry is recognizing how much impact this will bring. And uh, we don't speak much about that, but the talent in, in quantum is scarce, right? It's, it takes decades to educate a quantum scientist, a quantum engineer. It's a much longer path comparing to, you know, educating a software developer these days. So we think that this is a really, really good time because of these factors and then multiple others. So revolution is now and time to invest is also now. And uh, so if you have uh, any interest in discussing these topics, we'll be at the cocktail up there. I also see Charles Becbedé, our co-founder at Quantonation. He's also uh, available to discuss with any of you uh, regarding investing and the development of these uh, quantum startups. Thank you very much. Thank you.